public diplomacy, cultural and education programs is really getting to the person, uh, again, to the people, to the public, and trying to understand them with the idea that if we can understand publics, that will help us make better foreign policy decisions. My name is Kristen Kahn. I am a Foreign Service Officer for the U.S. Department of State. Policymakers cannot just be in their offices reading reports and uh, cables and, and, and making phone calls to government officials. They have to take into consideration um, what is happening amongst the foreign populations, what the repercussions will be. So when we're at the table, we're able to uh, feed that in. Um, and I can say in my experience uh, doing public diplomacy, I've always been at the side of my ambassador. We're often the ones who know what's happening on the street, what's happening on the ground. We're, we're the ones who can get a message out uh, the quickest, and we're often the ones who will be the first to, to hear about something going on. We try to be somewhat experts in the country we're working and living in. So a program that you're going to do in, say, Indonesia is going to be really different from a program you're going to do in, say, France. It would be too hard to list them all, but I um, mentioned the program Fulbright, was, which is a prestigious scholarship program. We do a lot, again, with um, the, the media and social media. But in between, there's a whole array of programs in sports, in art, in music, in entrepreneurship, in creating spaces, literally uh, makers uh, spaces where people can come in and experiment, maybe in communities where you know, electricity isn't even that widespread. And they're coming into an American center, going into a maker space, and they're creating something with a 3D printer. We took this official, this justice official, all around Mozambique, including up to the very north, uh, the Swahili coast on the border of Tanzania, and talked to audiences about what it was to have uh, uh, a justice uh, system that was a full-fledged part of our government and yet independent and fought against corruption and made important decisions. So, so good messages. Um, but this person, who again was a private citizen, uh, as he was talking to these Mozambicans, made some criticisms of the U.S. Uh, administration, of the U.S. government. But I didn't, you know, I didn't blink, I didn't budge, because this is what we do, and in fact it's a message I can later tell the, the, the group, is that the United States is the world's oldest democracy, by, by many accounts. Not a perfect democracy, and our freedom of speech is so old and entrenched and so much a part of what we are, that we can bring over these U.S. guests um, and they are imparting knowledge on other people, but they can also be critical of us, and that's okay, because that's what America is, is being, at times, critical and having discussion and debate and learning from each other. I think a lot of times people will think that we can go out and do a program, connect peoples, and all of a sudden, because people get to know America, they're gonna love America and therefore they're gonna love all of our foreign policy. That's not how it works. Um, our, our work can be very slow and hard to measure. And we are doing a lot of our programs um, based on data and research and knowledge but still with the uncertainty of when that dial is gonna move. We have presidents, prime ministers, ministers, even royalty, kings and so forth, who have either participated in one of our programs or have taken themselves to the United States, but they've had that cultural diplomacy in their lives. So when they are at the point of making a major decision, partnering with the United States on a security alliance, or deciding whether to support one of our proposals at the United Nations, 
that experience in the United States and with Americans will play into that. And it plays into it more than we might think. 